Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. Um, there's we're we're talking WandaVision on our weekly episode, and there's just so 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 Every much episode, to talk man. about. Every episode, it keeps getting oh, digging the hole deeper and deeper. I love a it. little bit. Uh, if, if anybody's confused, there's a couple changes on this week's panel. Uh, Courtney is taking a week off, but in her place, because she's so awesome, we actually had to have two people to cover <laughs> the, the, the the geeky the Miss Geeky page. Spot. So let me do these introductions first. I'm Dub, and I do stuff. And if you're a listener to the show, you know these two people. We have Mr. Blyze. How you doing? Doing pretty good, man. Excited to talk about the show. I've been waiting to get on one of these episodes. <laughs> We're all worried. And to the other <laughs> side, we have Miss Cheeky Chi. How are you doing today? AKA, if you're watching video, Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> uh, doing good. Excited to talk about it. Nice. And then our, our other two mainstays that has take, been taking this journey with us, we have Mr. Tommy and Mr. Chris. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. Super, Super psyched. Super psyched. Duper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let, let's let's start with um, the, the setting for this episode of WandaVision, because we always end up starting there. This was the 80s. This was a little family ties, a little growing pains, and if you looked at the windows, those were Mork and Mindy's ma- windows. Shut up. Yep, those are the stained glass from the Mork and, Mork and Mindy. Oh my gosh, Nanu Nanu, that is so exciting. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Yeah, I love that. Um, I, I really love this era of television, so I was expecting to like stuff. Um and they did not disappoint. Um, Let me throw in one thing real quick before we move on. Um, You're going to have to be listening to this one on YouTube. Hopefully we'll get the audio fixed. We apologize, but there's been some issues. We're changing um, podcast uh, servers and it hasn't been an easy process. So, and I know there's a couple of people that aren't going to listen to this till really late. So we apologize to you guys. because I know that you guys listen to it on your way to work, but I hope that you can at least listen on YouTube. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're gonna have to look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So let, let's let's start with the with the intro music. Did you guys catch anything interesting about the intro music? I think Satomi did. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Instantly. Instantly. I was obsessed with family ties as a kid. Mm-hmm. Michael J. Fox was my spirit animal. And I love I mean. What could we do, baby, without us? I mean, as soon as those credits started rolling, and I saw, especially when I saw the font, uh-huh. I lost my damn mind. Yeah. <laughs> Christina, you said you were about to say something? I was going to say, I was putting the Shauna Nanaz in between her, her theme song, mm-hmm. and and Sean immediately was like, hey, that's Family Ties. I said, I know. <laughs> Did anybody catch anything interesting about the lyrics on this one? Aside from the fact that they were you tailored didn't. to the, uh, oh, oh, it's the big one. It says it about ten or fifteen times. It's kind of a repeating phrase. We're making this up as we go along. Mm-hmm. I yep. know. Yeah. <laughs> I love telling Chris anything. It's like my favorite thing. <laughs> it's like Christmas. It's, it's like, but there's 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 so many things that tend to go over my head since I am now educating myself on the MCU with my self-imposed MCU movie marathon. But like every episode they've done in a specific decade or era, like it's just spot on and it's Mm -hmm. so good. And, you know, being a nineties kid, a lot of the eighties references go right over my head. So please explain to me as we go along some of these things for the younger oh, you're generation. A I'm, oh, I am a bebe. It's so, all the, the Mephisto um, theories that Dub has had. I thought he was going to say, if you played the lyrics backwards, they <laughs> said that the, the well, devil says, it, says no, it, 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 it sounds exactly like stairway to heaven backwards. So there you go. You know. <laughs> okay. That's so bad. Um, so we had another uh, mutant reference on this uh, in, within the first 20 seconds of the episode. Uh, Vision is holding the baby and says, let's see, uh, Darwin's 
descent of man made made the baby cry even harder because mutants would be in that evolutionary pattern so that that makes the mutant uncomfortable so that was definitely a mutant um little spoon for you um and that's that's another one that's just going to pass you by. We are going to be hitting a lot of mutant stuff and a lot of multiverse stuff today. Was that referenced in another show or another movie that spe- specifically the Darwin reference? Uh, no, no, I, you I, it may you have were just sort of. But no, it's, it's the Darwin. You were gleaning. Okay, yeah, I think it's just that because Darwin is like the the lead on evolution theory that that's the whole mutant argument is that they're the next step in human evolution so that's just where the the connection of that reference would be which is really deep a lot (laughs) yeah well that's you know i mean if you watch the x-men cartoon it was said a lot um magneto that was we are we are the next evolution of man and so that's his that's true and which he will be brought up later in this episode um just so you guys know, right now, I'll let you know when we're going to go to the next scene, but this is all in the first scene, what we're about to talk about right now. Um, let's talk. Does Does anybody else think that uh, the child Wicca is the one that's controlling the uh, the time jumps and not anything from the outside? The The child Wicca? The child is Wicca and speed. It's Billy. Build You're talking about Billy and t- speak, yeah. speak in those of us who <laughs> don't read the comics. Okay. Speak. Like so, me. So tell me, Billy yes. is when he grows up becomes the uh, superhero Wicca um, in the comics. So the whole thing is is that when they age jump from I think it's like five to ten mm-hmm. before they do well it, zero to five and then five first to 10. zero to well four. zero to five. But I'm talking about the when they go to ten. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember the other kid's name for some reason. But anyway, other kid looks at Billy and then they time. They time jump. They so time jump. Yeah. I think that they're showing because Wicca in the comic books has powers more in line with his mother and other kid has powers more in line with um, the the brother. He has super speed. Yeah, I would, would definitely assume that he's the one doing the time jumps. Now, when you say the time jumps, you mean the kids' time jumps. The jump. kids' time, time jumps. The kids' the time aging. jumps. Okay. The, the speed aging. Yeah. Okay. Speed aging. You know, at the, at What's the, your power? I can speed age. Well, that's, I'd say the chaos hex power is really a confusing power. If you you have to research it, and it gives you a lot of leeway, but it also makes for some weird storytelling. This is this is part of that, which I think is just fantastic. Um, let's see. Agnes also says, um, "Which go kids? You know, you just can't control them." So that's saying that even if my theory about the, you know, somebody else controlling things is true, those kids are controlling their own destiny. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, she was being. Go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, she was being really sketch in that scene with the kids because I think they were very hesitant to, like, give her either kids if I'm. If I remember correctly, yeah. but she was real sketch. Well, Vision was not. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of mystery is surrounding her. I know you're going to bring up some more about her in a minute, Dub, but it's hard to say where she, where she's playing this whole thing from. Is she a, uh, a captive of this universe? Is she part of it? Like running it? Like, it's well does anybody have going any back and forth? About what she's doing now there's there's some stuff that i'm going to hit but i want to hear what some of you guys' theory about what's agnes's deal with the kids well i think for me it kind of goes back to the lyrics we make it up as we go along like it looked to me like she expected this to happen a certain way mm-hmm. and when vision tried to change it she was looking at wanda for direction should i start over should i go back and 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 yeah. take my cue again. Yeah. And that's how I took it is she was like I don't know what to do because I was supposed to take the kids and now I'm just standing here. Yeah, and that's where it gets weird because there seem to be people in this world who have no idea what's going on. They're just living whatever weird alternate reality life is being created for them. And then there's some 
that have an idea of what's going on mm-hmm. and they're playing the part mm-hmm. that they were given like Agnes and um, Herb. Is it Herb? The neighbor. Yep. Cause yep. he did the same thing last episode where he was just cutting into the wall. And then he was like almost trying to tell vision that they needed help, but they didn't. Well, not to kick a dead horse and um, this isn't like I'm right, but it's starting to lead a lot more credence to the fact that there's more than one faction inside of there. Yeah. So there's, there's, most people are just a victim of circumstance. They're there, but there's those that they know what's going on. They have some control, but not much. So I think there's more going on than we think. Um, and we'll get to some other stuff on that as we go. Um, yeah. I, I has, I think that Agnes is kind of done playing the game. Yeah, I mean, she came right out of character, which is the first time that we've seen her really just drop it all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could be, I, in the comic books, if she is who we think she is, she was Wanda's teacher, for lack of a better term. Um, so I think that she's just trying to, she's like, you know what, I'm done playing this game. Let me just guide you in the way you're supposed to do this. See, and I don't, I didn't get that feeling. I get a feeling of fear from her. I think whatever Wanda's doing, um, especially from what we saw with uh, Vision's coworker, mm-hmm. um, that whatever she's doing is putting them in pain. She's hurting them at some level. And I think that she's afraid of her because when she dropped that and asked if she should run her line again, she was scared. Yeah, she that's what I got. She didn't just drop it. She, she looked at it and she was afraid of what wanda was going to do because they messed up the scene i i go ahead stoby i i was just going to say that um i i agree but i don't i i agree however what i got from this was that i think y'all's theory about um mephisto is that his Mm -hmm. name about mephisto is is really at play here because wanda later says a few things that indicate she's not entirely in control. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe maybe even the boys, like when they were asking her to, you know, or were telling her, you, you know, bring him back to, you know, bring our puppy back to life, that almost like they were manipul- either manipulating her, like maybe they they were speaking on behalf of Mephisto or some other mm-hmm. entity, or it was Mephisto manifesting gosh that's a weird thing to say Mephisto was manifesting these kids to sort of pressure her into finding out that she's got greater power than even she realizes hang on to that though I'm 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 not disagreeing with you but there is something that really ties into this okay but let's just we're kind of want to discuss step at a time Um, another thing that I thought was interesting with Agnes when she was spraying lavender um, if anybody's familiar with any of that stuff Lavender is supposed to ward off evil spirits. So she was post, she was spraying it over the kids. She didn't huh. say that though, right? That's not what she quoted. She no, said, but she said lavender everywhere. But that's what lavender is. Yeah. Okay. As far as I wasn't sure if I missed a quote on that one. No. <laughs> In the comic book lore, is there witchness? Yes. Traditional witchness? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. That that puts a whole other I think whole hers other is on traditional witch. Witchness. Agnes is, yes. Scarlet Witches is Mutants. a mutant power to manipulate reality. Okay. That did, I think, get boosted a little bit going from that side as well. Okay. So then, then we jumped out and we get to go back out into the real world again for a minute. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think that uh, what I was saying last week about... Uh, Monica got her powers from getting thrown out of there. I think that this this week, really, especially when the the MRI didn't read her anymore because she can. Um, I th- I'm trying to think of the word, but she can spread herself apart and get through places. So I think that's what the MRI is saying. So I do think that I was right that uh, Wanda gave her those powers. Dematerialize. Thank you. You, that was you, you just spoilered because for Chris and I, we <laughs> had no idea that that was going to be a power. Well, we don't know for sure, but okay. that, that that's my guess on when she went through the wall, that that's what 
is going on on that. And you that's mean when why they, she was thrown out? When she was thrown out. Got she, you. She, that's when she developed the power. Because oh, okay. she very specifically said, when you threw me out of here, you protected me. Yeah. So I think that that's all tying together on that one. Nice. See, I thought the when the MRI and the X-ray came like just blank or white, that that was uh, a side effect of being under that cosmic radiation bubble mm-hmm. thing. But this, well, is, this I like. I like this. I like where this is why, going. <laughs> why it couldn't be that though is because everything that came out and they showed it with the um, with the clothing. Everything that comes out is still exist in reality. So, because yeah. Wanda it's, just rewrites the reality, huh? Which is kind of an interesting play on that. What do you think about that, Blyce? I don't know, man. It's <laughs> just this show. It's so, like I was saying. It's so hard to pinpoint where this show is going because I see where that would be a, a good way for them to write in her powers, but her powers are in the comics are so much delved from the cosmic aspect of things Mm -hmm. that I don't, I don't know. I think there's something else going on with why her MRI and her blood test came back the way that they did. Maybe it's that when Wanda, and we may start to see this Wanda's reality bending powers because she doesn't have the control over it that she, that everyone thinks that she does. Maybe everything's breaking down. Maybe Monica is dying Could be. from it. Ooh. And and we'll maybe we'll start to see like the clothes start to deteriorate as they're in the w- real world for a longer amount of time. Like I said, there's so many things that this show could be doing and playing off of that it's yeah. it's just so hard to pinpoint. Yeah, there, there's right. a lot of things that could happen, but I just I like playing for what we well, kind of think is happening. Because the yeah. other side is she is one of the vanished, so that could be where that cosmic aspect comes in. Is you know tying in with what Wanda did to her and being one of the vanished could do it as well. Nice. When you say the vanished, it refers to the the snap. snap. Yep. Right. Yeah. The snap. Okay. Now, now this one blew my mind because I did not realize this, but this is the first MCU mention and it still hasn't been mentioned of her name of scarlet witch yeah like, yeah i know ne- i always thought oh yes yeah, she's scarlet witch and i did not know that they had never called her that they've called her the huh. witch once i can't remember what character said it but someone references her as the witch but as far as calling her scarlet witch yeah never never has happened in the mcu so far hmm. nice um and then the final thing out of this particular scene um didn't know if you guys were aware, but the um, the Wanda when she's stealing the Vision body was originally the post credit from um, Endgame. Yes, they took it out. Mm-hmm. Yes, ah, and I'm glad they did because that adds more to this. It would have had to have gone one way if they would have shown that, and now that they didn't, it can go in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I but if they would have just shown it like that, you're kind of you mean from the beginning. Yeah, from from that post credit scene, if we all would have known yeah. that was there, that, that would we change knew that she stole his body. Like, if we would have known coming out of Endgame into WandaVision that she took his body, that's a a big reveal of how like what's going on. Because right off the bat, we didn't know what was happening with Vision. Like, how did she get his body? Does she have his body? Is this like a recreation of him? We didn't know. Um, I also think that putting that end scene at the end of Endgame would have kind of taken away from the actual ending of Endgame uh, because it was such a strong ending. A villainous that, moment. That movie didn't need any Anything kind else? of stinger at the end of it, no. No, not at all. Um, okay, so let's jump over to the next scene. I don't have much on this one except for one wait, thing. Wait, 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 huh? wait, wait. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. One of the things that I was, uh, when they were asking Monica, And she said that she felt this overwhelming grief. Mm -hmm. And the director immediately assumes that was her pain. And it wasn't. It was it was Wanda's. And I think that's why Monica was trying to protect Wanda. I think at some level she's understanding that. And I don't know if anybody else picked up on that, but I was like, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a weird kinship that has happened between those two. I think that. There is something that we're going to see with connected with Monica and Wanda at some point, because there's a reason why they let her in. Yeah. 
don't know what it is yet. And I actually don't really have a theory yet. Well, apparently Monica's pretty sour with Captain Marvel right now, so she needs a so am I. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen it yet, but I'm working on it. Uh, I'll understand I'll understand this. I, I envy you. I, You've I never seen it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so I know you guys get sick of me saying it, but I'm going to say it again. Um, Mephisto, I'm not saying that he was or wasn't the dog, but once again, the the pet has, or the animal has, a Satan nickname, or a devil nickname, Sparky. It's a stretch. It's stre- yeah, it's when you stretch, go through every name that they've given an animal has been a old scratch. Um, I forgot what the other one was, and then this one. It's it's always a nickname of the devil. And you hey can man, argue whatever pet names you have for the devil on your guys' personal time, <laughs> you don't need to be putting it into WandaVision. <laughs> they, at least two of those are mentioned in Devil Goes Down to Georgia. Just see, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna disagree on the notion that Sparky the dog is named after Mephisto. It's because you know, he was licking the outlet and there was like a little spark. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, no, I, I, thought that was cl- I thought that was clever and cute. But, you know, if I'm wrong, which I probably am. It could always mean more I, than one thing, though. Yeah. If I'm wrong, I will I will admit it on the next time. <laughs> when, if when, you're when right, I find out it will right. be very cool. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think <laughs> that they're, they've been setting this up. You know, we talked about the Pelican with the uh, Namor thing and all that other. I just, I, th- I think it's, it's too much not to be, a co- or to just be a coincidence. And I think, <laughs> no, I think that I feel like Mephisto at this point, may be too on the nose. I wonder if it's a misdirect of some sort. That's I, a pretty huge misdirect. I, it just, they've done it before in the past. They've altered trailers. So that to throw you off. So I'm, I'm interested Again, man, this show could go any way or not. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's so and, nice to hear Blythe say that. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, I, mean, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen <laughs> from start to finish. And tell me if that's what you want. I mean, I'm, I was trying to be here for you guys and not spoil the See, whole this thing. Is, this is why want. we all mute the spoilers page on Discord. I'm just saying. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> um, and there is a part two to this, but we'll come back to that on the second to last scene. Okay, let's go up to the um, next scene. Not much in this one, except for my favorite thing that they finally named Wanda's powers of the Hex. Yeah. The Hex so, power is what she has. So they, they, call, they called, I thought they were calling the, well, first of all, very interesting because it is a Wiccan reference. Mm-hmm. Um, but secondly, I thought they were just referring to the, the hexagonal dome. Rather than uh, no, her powers in general, said something about well, she's using her hex power right there. You said hex, yeah. Oh, but you're right. We're talking about the Kevlar and yeah. this, and the new clothes. See, and right there, I was still thinking it was the border because they changed as she went through the border. But Wanda but, creates it, so yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Oh no, it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes I sense. I just, Wanda I just wasn't. Creates. Ooh, we think one she does. It. <laughs> <laughs> no as, as as i say we we may be right we may be wrong it we're gonna be we may be crazy you know hey er, er, but, but we just, just a broken clock picks we're looking for yes, yes. A broken clock <laughs> will uh, be right two times a day so there'll be a few of these we will be right on probably there'll be a lot we're not right on so okay so let's uh move on to the next scene um, this was kind of a disturbing moment for me. No one really seemed to have picked up on it. Um, Vision has a bit of control. We found that out. Yeah. And then he made a choice to put him back into his trance when he was done. Well, he because he was in his, so much pain. He has his power set. Yeah. yeah. That's what he was able to manipulate the, um, uh, like the electrons in his in his brain to unlock it. So yeah, mm-hmm. he definitely has control of his. And then he power that that yeah. that kind of it bothered me that he relocked him. He could have like he he could have set him free. He could have ended this. And well, he, he can't get he to. can't get him out. And he was in so much pain that I think he did what he thought was the best thing he could do in that moment. And then he immediately went to Wanda, and that was his whole focus: is that he is in pain. Yeah. So I, I I didn't have a problem with that because 
I felt like he didn't want him to continue to hurt, but he went to Wanda to fix it. I don't know. Christina I, there. I feel like if, it's almost like the morphine shot in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like if uh, Vision just left him unlocked, that, you know, Wanda would find out and do something terrible to that poor guy who's clearly there against his will. So, he could have walked around and done it to everybody, though. But he didn't. I but know. Didn't. I, I don't. I don't disagree. Yeah. Well, and, but, but that, if, that's just my well, if he on. did that, yeah. not knowing what was going on and why they were put into these trances, logically yeah. speaking, which he's very logical, it could be for a good reason that he doesn't know about. He needs to find out what has transpired before he can take an action on it that would not imperil the other people in the town. Yeah, that, that, mm. that's fair enough. You know. Yeah. I, I say it's just. It's just I'm looking at both sides of it, you know, it, you know, maybe he's liking this lifetime. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he kind of knows that he might not be alive and he doesn't want to think about it. Hmm. I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that because he, he immediately um, confronted her with it. Mm -hmm. And then there's that scene that actually made me tear up when he's like, I don't remember I don't remember who I am before this point. Yeah. And if you go back to the previous scene, they talk about when she steals his body, that not only was it a government thing, but he had like a, a DNR for himself because he didn't want to come back and be used as any weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't fit into who he is. That's fair. Um, but I say, and this is where we do break off and, you know, especially with like Herb and Agnes we see that there are definitely different levels of knowledge of what's going on that. And, and this is, I said a little, a little earlier, but this is where we are seeing there is more than one faction involved in this. Does it feel like to anybody else that um, the people that she uses the most seem to be a little more self-aware than people that we don't see as often. So maybe their brains get scrambled a little more because she's constantly rewriting the story where they're involved, like mm -hmm. the neighbor versus somebody that lives down the street that she only sees occasionally. Well, either that could, or there's a level of awareness that they're part of what's keeping this reality going. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I, I could see that being very plausible. I didn't think about that either. Um, at the when she says when i know we'll get into this a little bit later but when they're having their little argument and and she tells vision straight up do you think i'm controlling everything here do you think i'm controlling all the people and all the animals and everything like that maybe that's exactly what it is maybe those people who are the background characters are on a, a type of autopilot that she isn't necessarily controlling they're just in an existence Whereas the people who are more in her actual plot, she needs to give them a little bit more freedom so that they can play the parts that she wants them to play. That, that could be. So, yeah, that, they, this is going to be an interesting one going forward, part of it going forward. What, what, yeah. What's up? Christina? I was going to say, when they talked about there were no children, it gave me just mm. the really bad chills. Like, like it just really creeped me out for some reason when they talked about how there's no children there, but they're two kids. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. um, well, we should go on this way, but I'll, I'll hit this anyway. Cause you just said it. Um, what, and what did Agnes say? Children, you can't control them. Yep. Yep. And you take, take it for what. You oh! 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 <laughs> I loved watching uh... your guys' heads just explode for a second. <laughs> that was oh awesome. God, it makes so much sense. It makes right. so much sense. Which is, yeah. Which is why it gave me the chills. Cause then where are all the kids? Cause they're definitely not on the outside or they'd have, they'd have said something about all these kids wandering around that belong to this town. So where the heck are all the kids? Did they do those people belong in the town? Because it's never really confirmed. I, I think they're yeah, imported. It is. Yeah, they don't they? When she first figures out it's, uh, she finds the broadcast signal. They mm -hmm. have that board where they're like, the person that's playing this is really this person. Yeah, the person that's playing this. So those were people really from that town. Except that town doesn't exist. We started the yeah. whole series. Where where there were cops from Eastview saying yeah. that Westview does not exist. So but, I personally think but they does were it imported. not ex but does it not exist because 
she made it cease to exist. Like she I, hid it from I don't the rest of the one. world. Yeah. Or it could because be either. They definitely found these these living, breathing people that were playing these characters. I think and that's they even it. And I they think even, any oh go ahead. Sorry, Christina. Go ahead. No. I was gonna say they even said it when they said, I wonder who's playing her kids. And Monica's like, no, those are really her kids. So they're they're constantly talking about these characters being other actual yeah. living, breathing people. You okay, <laughs> Chris? Right, but I I do think that they're living, breathing people that have been imported from elsewhere. That's that was how mm-hmm. I always felt, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Okay, yes, I have Chris. a theory. I have a theory. I have a theory because you know, in one of the episodes, you know, we see them, um, the agent and Monica. I think her name is. Yeah. Um, you know, they pull off on Disney's New Jersey Turnpike and the sign says Westview on it. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm assuming that Wanda's controlling that. But my theory is, and maybe I'm jumping too far ahead. Well, actually, yeah, I'm jumping too far ahead. So I'm going to wait till we get to that part because okay. it involves the end. So I'm going to okay, put yeah, a... Let's try to hit that. Okay. I, apo- I apologize. Sorry. No, wait, <laughs> we got to jump ahead to the next scene, which was the game changer for this episode. Uh, Wanda steps out of the dome. Yes. Oh, she was so that moment felt so good. Now there was a couple things that happened in this scene that are notable and uh Blythe, if I missed any, let me know on this. Um I'll do that one last. She turns the dome red. Yes. It was it was mind control yellow. Now it's under her control. So is mind control yellow as somebody else's power? Is that a Mephisto? Is. So oh, that's, that's true. That's the Mind Stone, right? The Mind Stone. So the Mind Stone is yellow. Both of them originate from it. So uh, Scarlet Witch got her powers from the Mind Stone uh, with with experiments that were done by her, to her by Strucker. Uh, Vision is basically created from the Mind Stone, um, but red seems to signify her uh, reality. The reality stone was a red stone um, when... Oh, wow. That's I don't an know. entirely different thing then. And I don't know. I, w- I wanted to say this to you. This is why your guys' episodes are so awesome. So in the episode with the stork, remember how she was poofing the red around yeah. it? That effect, that red mist effect, is the same effect that um, Thanos uses whenever he uses the the red reality stone so anytime he manipulates reality that red poof Mm -hmm. of smoke is what happens yes so yeah she's completely taking control then at this point yeah i think that's the signifying that she's that she is manipulating the reality of that dome and she's basically putting a lock on it nobody's getting back in that dome yeah So here's where my theory comes in. She says something along the lines of, I have everything I need. So she, you know, we, from seeing her, that cutscene of her stealing Vision's body, you know, she clearly has his actual corpse, but Mm. it's interesting. It's at least in my mind, I think it's interesting. Like a question comes to my mind. Is this vision reconstruct like actually been reconstructed or is this just something that she's created like everything inside the hex because this is she the i don't remember what i want to say um when she says i have everything i need this is like her happy little utopia before Mm -hmm. vision got killed and she's just trying to live her life even though she's clearly you know made up a town and you know kidnapped people as it's yeah, evident now. It's her PTSD so, safe spot. Yeah, so yeah, I think you know she's in control. She's definitely in control of everything after after this episode. So it'll be seeing. It'll be interesting to see like is Vision actually Vision, or are we going to see like a scene where he's like in pieces with like tubes and wires being powered mm-hmm. by like one of Tony Stark's. Oh wow, heart yeah. things, I have another theory on that, but we are going to get yeah, but, because yes, that is. Yeah. Because she says to him, you've never spoke to me this way before, yeah. you know, and, and so maybe it's not holy vision. Like, that's good, Chris. I love that. Yeah. Now, something I'm curious, curious, just talking about the red smoke is she had that massive battle with Thanos. 
And so I'm wondering, because her powers are gleaned from experiments that were done with the Mind Stone, perhaps during that ba- during that battle, did she like somehow? Um, uh, what's the word I'm I'm looking for when you when you like soak it in? Augment your power. <laughs> um, both of those work. I'm going to say absorb. Did she maybe absorb, somehow absorb yeah. some of the some of the uh, properties of? the reality stone and po- possibly even the other stones. Cause you guys keep talking about how she's, she's got more power than any other superhero. So yeah. yeah even the, Monica said it, which I cheered and screamed when she said it, but that's just the, me. The only reason why I would say no to that theory. Satomi, is because at that point in the battle, um, Thanos didn't have the uh, gauntlet. He didn't have oh. any of the stones on him. Yeah. He was just okay. fighting without it. So I Never would mind. say that the the red mist part of it is just the MCU's signification of reality being altered. So anytime yeah. reality is altered, I'm sure you are seeing some form of that red hue going on, whether it be in her powers, the mist, or or something like that. Gotcha. Now there, there's she, two more things I want to hit. I'll, I'll go ahead, Chris. And then we got two more things. I want to I, hit. I, just just to piggyback real briefly, because you know the whole theme of the episode. One of the themes of the episode is like everyone is in pain, but it's not her, their pain. It's Wanda's pain. Yeah. So, oh no, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, it's it, <laughs> it, it, it's like it's like it's like reality. She's bending reality in a way where it's like the only thing that's being felt inside of that hex is is her her mm-hmm. pain and her feelings yeah and we're i think we're getting closer and closer to yeah. her just being 100 percent of that's her yeah. um two things i want to hit real quick um wanda has her accent back for the first time since the first half yes. hour of uh ultron it hadn't been there anywhere else since then yeah So let me throw this at you. I know this is completely way off and probably is not the case. Do you think that's our Wanda? Is there a separate, is there either, there's two things that I think may have happened from that, from the, the accent signification is, is either she has a split personality where she's keeping the peace that she has and the good thoughts of, that what she has inside of Westview and the evil and the hate and the anger is what leaves the bubble. Mm. And that is the piece that has the accent still. Or do we have a Wanda A, Wanda B type scenario, considering this is also opening up a, a multiverse type situation. And before you answer it, save it. Cause this, this is the end part, but this is exactly what I want to talk about, but I want to wait just, I was, we're almost there. Yeah. We're yeah. almost there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. But I have to put all these things together before I can throw this out. Okay. And then the final part on this, um, this the, the weapon scene was the oh. exact same scene from X-Men that, that her dad, Magneto, did. They're setting up for that, for Magneto to be the dad. Yeah, so. I think it's in Days of Futures Past when he turned yeah. out Days of Futures Past? Weapons. I know he yeah, did it in X, the first one, too, as well, I think. He may do it in every movie. That's kind of his thing is that he turns he people's metal guns on them. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, l- the Legos commercial. Um, yes, I think we were right. This is all just every one of these commercials is pain from her past. I was very confused. I didn't get it. At I all. didn't either. Explain. So I know this one isn't your uh, biggest fan, Satomi, but it's from Civil War. Oh, that's probably um, why then. It's the w- the <laughs> scene where they track down Crossbones and he's about to um, blow himself up and she surrounds him in the bubble and throws him in the air and he explodes on the building that essentially kills a bunch of people and, and starts the whole process of the Sokovia Accords. Yes. That that's city that they're in is Lagos. Ah. Uh, that, that's, okay. what, that's what all that, that red is that they couldn't pick up fast enough. Okay, that's all the blood. Okay, next scene. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Next scene. Does anybody else think that Agnes killed Sparky? I I it all depends on who she she is. I think it yeah, it depends on who she is. I I don't think so, but I'm gonna go for who I think she is, but I think she's trying to protect Wanda and the kids 
from unless she's part of the whole let's try to push Wanda to you to it to you know like that that whole yeah. like manipulation to grow her powers if it is however if it is who i think it is i don't think that that's the case okay. but say I, I could be wrong but that this is one of the few things i've been very 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 sure about on this show your I... honor i i don't have enough evidence to <laughs> say whether or not definitively that uh she killed the dog so i'm just going to i'm just going to yield it it just kind of looks like that could be the case. I don't I say I could be wrong, but that felt like, you know, she was, she was hiding and then suddenly the dogs wrapped up. I just, I couldn't, I, I couldn't uh, show him to you until he was gone. No, I wanted to wrap him up before I, wanted to wrap I showed him, up before him, to, I showed him to you. To you. I they, think that this I would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this scene showed me that she can't bring people back from the dead i think everyone think that she can Mm. but she can't i think what we saw in this episode and what we saw in the one previously when vision is shown as his gray form with the mind stone gone he's just i know dub's gonna bring up a, a different scenario coming up but i think he's just a puppet i think that he is she pieced him together he is a husk, and she is just <sighs> pulling the strings on him. It's possible. And that's what that. I think that we're going to get a very sad moment towards the end of this show, where she goes full evil, where Vision is already scared, and her hex is going to start to go away, and the only place that he has to go is back to being dead, and he has no control over that. Yeah, because when when she was explaining to the kids about how, you know, when you're dead, you're dead, basically, Mm -hmm. paraphrasing, like, that made me think of, you know, the whole dead vision scene, because if she did have that power, she would have brought him back from the dead already. So I, I, I thought that was interesting. Okay, so now I now I now I finally get a piece together what I've been wanting to piece together since the beginning. Um, And then. This also includes the Quicksilver stuff. Um, There may be, there's probably more of the Quicksilver stuff, but um, are you guys aware that that was a Quicksilver from a different universe? Mm -hmm. I did not know it was from, he was a Quicksilver from a different universe. It's from the days of future past. Okay. I just got super excited that it was Evan Peters. So, you know, done and done. I thought it was Magneto. (laughs) Oh, when he when he knocked in the first place? Yeah, I thought it was Magneto. I could see that. Um, so, and and I want to throw this one thing out about Quicksilver when I get to this, is she did not recognize who he was. She had an idea because of the hair and all that. She did not know who he was until he said, you're not going to give your brother a hug? I, I thought I thought that was funny how, like, the She did people, not know who he was. I, like the, the agents and, you know, s- sword. Yeah, sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sword was like she recast Pietro, and then it, it, that's when it clicked. I'm like, oh, it's it's her brother, but that's the days of future past mm-hmm. brother, and not the other guy who hasn't been in the series since he got killed in Ultron. <laughs> Go ahead, Blyze, and then let me put piece this together. I think it. She did know who he was because she says his name before he says that line of "Come give your brother a hug." She said she says Pietro. And I think the well, reason why she looks the way that she yeah. does is because she knows he's from a different reality that she's peeked into other realities before. Ooh. And she's confused as to why that Pietro is standing at her doorstep. Okay. I, I, hmm. Actually, you know, yours isn't going too far away from my, you know, what my thought is on this. I think that, this is where we're going to start seeing the multiverse come into play. She had, this is the first time you hear her say, I cannot bring somebody back from the dead, but we have a vision there that, you know, he's a little bit different from the vision. We know his powers are a little different than we've ever seen from vision before. His personality is a little bit different than the, than the, than the vision she knew before. I think this, this is a vision from a different reality. I think that, I think she pulled him in, but I think that that um, because she can't bring her brother back that died in uh, 
Ultron? Yeah. The yeah. Titan of, in Ultron, I think that somebody, namely the person that's doing the next movie with her, which is about the multiverse, uh, Doctor Strange, pulled him in to try to give her some sanity. I think he's been doing holding a lot of strings. He's been a lot of the protection, I think, the whole time. See, I, yeah. I like that. But but just because last week when we saw Dead Vision, I, I don't know that she's pulled another Vision in. Because, uh, man, or if I'll she just, just see the other one and she's like, this isn't my Vision. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, just I, I, in that, I'll just say this, because you, you guys did so good last week. But that moment, I for real legit was nauseous when, when we saw that Vision. And you should have been. And um, and just the look on her face was just like he's not really there. So it could be that she pulled an alternate vision in, um, or it could be that she's just I you know piecing together parts of him. I I think that you know because she's writing this world of only things that she wants to see. Mm -hmm. Like my theory of you know visions actually like under the floorboards with all like like an arc reactor and a bunch of tubes in his body and this is just like some apparition that you know has sentience and can interact with the world so i, I don't i don't again i don't have enough evidence or you know <laughs> to to say definitively whether or not you know this yeah. is a different vision but i i like that theory but i bet i i second that I second that. I, I really love, I mean, if, if that's where they go, I would be happy. I would enjoy that. I think we're going to see some Doctor Strange in a big way. And he's the only one that makes sense that could be doing something that's going to try to protect Wanda, but not interfere because she's got to do it. Because like anything with, with Doctor Strange, she's people got to do what they got to do, but he's got to yeah. protect, he's going to do what he can to keep people from getting hurt. Although Doctor Strange wouldn't pull in unwilling, uh, I, I don't think he was unwilling. He didn't seem unwilling. No, no, I'm talking about oh, the, the, the neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think that's Doctor Strange no, I don't think though. That's him. He yeah, might so. be gently trying to wake her up to the truth by bringing in like her brother. Um, versus, you know, he would never he would never put people in pain like that. So yeah. maybe that's a conversation that happened. Hey, we need your help. So to expand a little bit on the Doctor Strange kind of being the one that's that's helping while she's doing all the craziness, what if what we saw her do to the bubble was her undoing Strange some Strange. sort of barrier that Doctor Strange already has on it? Mm -hmm. We may very well get next episode that that bubble is going to start expanding now that yeah. she's touched it and she's released Ooh. it. Uh, yeah, that, that I was waiting on that, but yes, I think that is totally what... What's if freaking chills flies. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are coming up with some good theories tonight. Now, I, the, um, uh, this pretty much covers the theory. There's one more theory that is back a couple of scenes that we didn't mention. Anybody have any guesses on who that astrophysicist is? I think Blythe might have an idea. It's, it's, Reed, 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 it's Reed Richards, bro. It's, Reed it's Richards. Mr. Fantastic. It is. I think it is anyway. Which... Yeah, as long as they don't pull in the crappy one from the Fantastic Four movies. <laughs> oh God. From the no, new I Fantastic, our most recent. It could be any number of people. I kind of could hope that Tony. they don't do Reed Richards only because it's a lot, man. Now you've pulled in, you're you're talking about pulling in Doctor Strange. You've pulled, you're starting to pull in X-Men from a different universe. And now you're going to add the Fantastic Four in as well. I think it might be a little bit. Oh, and... Mephisto as well, if that's the way that they're going. So I am Emma Frost, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. she's so Donnie. <laughs> it could be an um any number of people that she's revenging. It could be um Wonder Man. Wonder Man, yeah. It could be his his not Wonder Man specifically, but it could be his um his alter ego before he becomes Wonder Man. I don't know that Wonder Man is a big enough deal that people are going to... They said that whatever this... The next surprise, and they weren't talking about Quicksilver, is supposed to be mind-blowing. Wonder Anything that they put up for Wonder Man is not going oh, to be no, mind no, no. I don't think that that's going to be the, the thing, but I also think that that reveal that they're talking about is not one person. I think that mm. because they've... They've described this reveal, and Chris, you will 
enjoy this, and so will you, Satomi. They describe this reveal as being Luke Skywalker at the end of Mandalorian Big. So, I think it's the whole (laughs) X-Men team. I don't think that we're just getting Pietro Quicksilver. I think we're getting Xavier. I think we're getting Cyclops. I think we're getting Beast. The best parts of the Fox X-Men universe are going to be pulled in um, because one of the things that happens in the comics is that anytime Scarlet Witch has some sort of breakdown, Xavier's not too far behind. To yep. Yep. Find up. yep. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. But you also have to do this. We have the the real movie, not the series, the movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse, they got to save some stuff for that. And that's one of those, that's movie worthy, I think more than TV worthy. I, I, I'm i not unless saying you're wrong. I'd like you to be right. Unless they're using it yeah. to build off of the movie. It might be a great, great platform for that as well. There's so think- much that they're going to have to pull from now that they have all these properties. And we're so happy have about any it. Kind of, yeah. Any shortage I- of characters that I think if they're going to start introducing characters from the X-Men, I think they're going to have to just drop one big one for this show because like you guys have been saying, they got to save it for, you know, phase four and 7,000 of the MCU series that's going to go on from now until the end of time. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see, but it, it, it depends on who it is. If it's like Dr. If it's, a, if it's a Xavier, Everyone's going to be like, what? If it's Wolverine, it's going to be like, what? If it's Magneto, you know, you know, I don't think it matters to a degree who it is, but it'd be like, I feel like they wouldn't do the entire X-Men yeah. in one review. No, I, th- I think they have yeah. to save that for the multiverse. I think the real, the biggest one would really be Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine, but he won't <laughs> because no, he's already I, said that he's done with the character. He said he'll do one more with Deadpool. Yeah, but he's... But I mean, for as far as him entering the MCU, that's why I also don't think if we get Magneto or Xavier, it's going to be McKinnon or um, Patrick, just because none of those guys want to be entering the universe. Yeah, exactly. When they need they need fifteen to twenty years of having somebody. Exactly. (laughs) And that's um that's not an insult to these these fantastic actors but they can't do it anymore they can't play 15 years left they can play one movie of this and that's not what mcu is doing nope because they they spent what a jillion dollars on this franchise they're not going to do it yeah oh so there was no song this week for us to discuss because it just went right into the music and but uh, you know what what we haven't touched on is that fantastic moment when the credits started to roll. Oh, yeah. And they argued yeah. through it. That was and spectacular. That was another bit of her not having control anymore. Yeah. There, this, as much as, you know, it's, I don't know how this happened. She, he goes, I, I know you didn't start this, but you're in control of it now or something. And she's starting to lose control already. Yeah, um, yeah I don't like, think I re- her power can handle that much that long. Like that scene, like I read that scene as when the credits started rolling, like she was done with that conversation. And then when Vision kept, you know, going and the credits stopped, it was just like, no, we're talking about this. So yeah. I, with, I agree with what Satomi said. It was, it was brilliant. Oh, no, absolutely. How they did that. <laughs> funny, funny though. I had paused it just before the, they had started rolling the credits because I had to go to little girl's room. So when I came back and it started rolling the credits, I looked at Sean and I was like, you watch this without me? Because I thought I had missed like 17 minutes. <laughs> uh I know you guys mentioned this on a previous show too, but how about Bettany, man? He just keeps turning oh. it up and turning it oh. up. That scene where he is just laying it all out is so powerful. Yeah. That that guy, I mean, what whatever the the high award is for for what is it, an Emmy? Mm-hmm. Um, for he deserves it. He he's been better than anybody in the Marvel universe. Period. And talk yeah. about a guy that they just called him in to do the freaking voiceover for Jarvis and Iron Man one, and now he's a full blown character yep. in his own show. Yeah. yeah, amazing. I fell in love with him in, on a Knight's Tale, and I've been in love with him ever since. So <laughs> he's spectacular. So he's um, just a joy to watch. Now, Blize, I don't know if you know how many more episodes we have left. Two or three. This was episode five. five. So we have four more. Four, four more. Four yeah. more episodes. Nine. Nine There's a lot we can do on this. Thank goodness. 
Um, I'm not even going to, I, I'm not going to play that. What do you guys think is going to happen next time? Cause nope. I, well, I think that we're, I, I will give my one thing. I think that we're going to see a friends motif. Um, cause it's I not- hope so. Oh, I hope so. Yes. Well, the thousands is supposed to be, um, modern family. Oh, I fun. can see that. I was going to ask, gonna- do, you, do you think they keep going after no. this? I felt like either this episode or the next episode is going to be the last time we see a sitcom. Based. I think we're going to see two more because yeah, well, we know modern family. And I think they've get to not, to not be able to throw friends on there and come on. It's like, well, what's going to happen when the TV shows catch up to like present day. It's like, yeah, it, what well, are they going to do at that point? It'll be done at that point. I think, I think we're going to have another, um, pardon the interruption type episode. And then, then probably well, wrap they, up because they also have to show sort of the decline of her control or the decline of this world. Yeah, and yeah. this was showing fraying on the edges, but it wasn't full blown self destruct. Oh yeah, no, but I think we're, we're going to see a lot more of that though. Yeah, I think it's it's going to get more and more uh, intense until it. I'm I'm going to be I I'm, I'm very curious if all of a sudden like the whole military camp or like a whole you know the whole country all of a sudden is boom we're in we're back in tv and suddenly we're suddenly we're black and white again um you know maybe she puts it in a loop uh yeah. who knows anything can happen anything, anything can happen and with that being said this was an episode guys thank you for going on this journey with me i know i say it every week but this has been a journey with y'all um special thanks to blize and christina for stepping in this week uh we, we, we miss you, Miss Geeky Page, and for and I'm Dub, and I'm also here with Chris and Satomi. Keep on geeking on. Go to our stuff. Subscribe. Do everything. Blah, blah. You've been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.